Call meeting to order the Sierra Arlington School Committee, Thursday, March 24th, 2016. Um, we begin with public participation. Is there anybody on the list for public participation? <laughs> Harper! Did you sign up? No. No, no, no. Okay. Um, th this is uh, one of the things we do at the end of terms is that, uh, and, and it's sort of sad, uh, that we have to say goodbye to a dear friend. Um, Judd, one of the absolute joys of school committee service was the opportunity to hang out with Arlington's very own Atticus Finch for two nights every month. There was a time about nine years ago when I, was sad, uh, when I said that doing two good terms on the school committee was an admirable goal in itself. Judd, you have had two terms that were more than just good, but Judd, it's certainly not enough. I was hoping for an encore. Maybe one of the remaining members will aspire to the dark side, take a seat on the selectmen's chambers, and offer you the spectacular opportunity to fill an unexpired term. But we all understand there are only so many hours in the day, so many home games in a Red Sox season, so many minutes to spend with your family and your beloved dog. Squeezing in school committee with your other passion as a thespian would require us to convert our clocks to some sort of extended metric time. <laughs> I see the joy that theater brings to you along with the laughter and applause that never comes at a policies and procedures subcommittee meeting. And I know the joy and laughs you'll bring to folks on the other stage are really important. It's been fun seeing you perform as an actor. You are truly a master of comedic, neurotic roles that are heightened by the deep reservoir of anxiety that comes with serving two terms on the school committee. <laughs> How could I ever thank you, my friend? Uh -oh. I couldn't afford an early Antrios. Those paintings from the 70s. <laughs> when last I heard, we're going for around 200,000, even more. But he's going through a similar phase right now. The lines are a little bit wider. <laughs> but they almost have the same subtle appeal. You still won't get the resonance at this moment. You won't truly appreciate it until the middle of the day. The resonance you get from something monochromatic, it doesn't really happen under artificial light. <laughs> Not that it's actually monochromatic. And the school committee will be a little more monochromatic after you're gone. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> see some red in it. Well, Judd can later. Um, if you haven't and, seen and I know play. that uh, the remaining members would, I'm sure, have something to say to you as well. So why don't I go around starting at Bill? This may be very, very surprising. I have a few words to say. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> very few of you know that Judd has been a controlling influence on me. I would get all excited, which you've all seen. He'd calm me down just by listening. He's one of the best listeners I've ever experienced. Very rare in a younger person. Usually happens in old people because we don't we keep forgetting what we want to say. Judd, you've been very good to me, very good for me, and whether the committee realizes it, very good for them too. Because a lot of the things that I wanted to say didn't get said because of you bringing reality to me and common sense. I, I and the other thing, you were so kind to the old man. You always laughed at my jokes, even when they were bad. <laughs> I appreciate it. I will truly miss you. God luck. Thank Good you. luck and Godspeed. Thank you. Kersey. 
Mr. Jay. I'm doing this without notes. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, when Paul talked about starting the meeting and having something for you, he made an illusion that I'm, you're my committee husband because we've been on the same cycle. <laughs> I was thinking about that, and I don't agree. I think you're more like my twin. <laughs> 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 and I don't know, most several of you weren't on the committee then, but Judd and I made it through, I think, our first two years of service having coordinating outfits for every meeting, or almost every meeting. And we never <laughs> talked outside of meeting. It just happened. It was, it was really weird for a while. <laughs> it was like, yeah. no, it's not happening much anymore. A little, maybe. Yeah, a little bit. But no, it, it kind of faded away. But, but yeah, so. And I felt like for the first two years and, and beyond that, that we were working together, we were lost at the same points, we were confused at the same points, sure. and sometimes we had laughs at the same points. Yeah. Um, but, and that's when I'm gonna miss the most. I, I appreciate everything you've done for policy and for the committee, but I'm gonna miss your laugh, I'm gonna miss your smile, so bye. Thank you so much. <laughs> Cindy. Judd. Oh. <laughs> it has been so great to serve with you and get to know you these past six years. It truly is. And I'm sad that you're leaving us. I feel that your passion and your excitement has been infectious. You, you in, imbue all of us with just this wonderful passion of things. You have such a passionate heart and soul. And I'm envious of you going off to follow one of those passions. Um, and. Uh, plan to follow in your footsteps someday, not in theater, but you know, every one of us has something else and, and you know, it makes me think, hmm, wow, what would I do, you know? So <laughs> you keep me thinking. Um, I really hope that you'll stay in touch. I hope Absolutely. you'll keep letting us know when we can see you and where we can see you. Mm -hmm. um, and as we said before the meeting, I really hope that you'll come back, talk to us about things. You're still a parent, you're still in the schools. Um, you know, we look forward to having you uh, on the other side and uh, we'll miss you miss you terribly thank you so much thank you, thank you Jeff uh, I think you and I always match I mean I always were <laughs> <laughs> but I want to from another mother that's right but I want to say that uh, when Judd and Kirsty got elected six years ago the committee was in a very different place um, and because of both of you because of Judd's uh, temperament and focus on kids and focus on teaching and learning the committee's culture shifted in a very positive way for teaching and learning in the district and for the community as a whole. I think we are um, uh, we're better perceived by people than we were six years ago, and that's due to the way you served on the committee, the compassion you had for kids. I love the way you were chair. You always began every meeting with something very thoughtful, and I think about on the way home, what, what did he mean? Why did he pick that? <laughs> Was it directed at me? Was it something I said? <laughs> It might have been. <laughs> so, uh, uh, and I really, I'm looking forward to following your theater career. Christine and I want to go to more performances by Judson Pierce all over New England. And uh, we'll <laughs> see each other and see our kids in, on, stage, on yeah. stage in different places as well. So we'll miss you. It has been an honor serving with you. You've been a great colleague, great friend, great member of the school committee. Thank and you. the town's been lucky to have you in that seat. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jennifer. Uh, well, six years ago, some parents uh, were pushing me to run for school committee, and I sat in a few meetings, and I decided, no way. <laughs> no way. <laughs> wasn't a good time. Mm -hmm. And then I was introduced to you as a possible campaign manager, um, and, uh, which I accepted and, and completely bungled. But I remember that anyway. Starbucks. <laughs> our, our blind date on Starbucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I walked in, wasn't sure if I'd support you, and you seemed passionate and interesting and um, a different kind of person than the people I'd seen, than the meeting I'd been to when I decided no. And um, I echo what, what Jeff says. I mean, I, uh, I then decided later that I could run because the culture had changed, and that's very much due to, to you, your influence. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jen. Dr. Bodie. Well, I, I echo all of this. You've just been a wonderful member. I've enjoyed working with you, um, mm -hmm. for you. Uh, 
I think people who are watching have no idea how much time this job takes. And you have thrown yourself into all of the work wholeheartedly and with great detail. When you run a meeting in the subcommittee meetings, you're so open. And Bill mentioned uh, your ability to listen. I found that, particularly when you were chair, when we had to talk a lot more, you were always wanting to listen and understand um, and curious. And you, you, you exercise the same kind of curiosity we, we all want um, our, our students to have as well as our educators as they, they try to learn more and understand and be able to see how everything connects. And it's, it's a complex uh, job that you've had here on the school committee, but you've done it so well, and uh, it's been it's been such a really a pleasure to, to work with you, and uh, we'll miss you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anything else? Mm -hmm. uh, on behalf of the town of Arlington, which is I know everyone in this town is grateful for your service. Uh, we have a parting gift beyond the Antrios. We have a uh, commemorative chair that commemorates your six years of service on the Arlington School Committee. Uh, I hope it has a more honored place in your home and your heart than the Antrios, uh, <laughs> because it deserves it. Um, and uh, we'll take some time, we'll take a break from this meeting to celebrate with some cake and some conversations and just to celebrate your service to the community. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Speech. Um, yeah, I just prepared something very short. Um, six years ago, uh, school committee looked very different than it does today. Uh, meeting documents arrived at our front doors the week of our meeting. We met from 7.30 until many times past 11 o'clock, and Jeff, Cindy, and Kiersey were here, and Bill, Paul, and Jennifer were yet to arrive, although Paul was doing his second turn. Mm -hmm. There were different colored documents all over the desk. Many of them we saw just kind of that night. Um, we had the task of cutting into programs that we didn't want to eliminate. The budget was not our friend, but rather a lurking cold and heartless beast awaiting our attention every year, and we experienced some turmoil. A year later, thanks to the generosity of this town through the amazing Bridge the Gap campaign and through our town's uh, override of Proposition 2 and a half, the schools were able to add back, and it was like water for a strong thirst. Programs thrived. Additional hardworking educators and administrators were hired. Our chief financial officer, Ms. Johnson, brought a modernization of our books, accounting, and business practices. New counsel arrived to help us get through contract negotiations and other legal matters. Uh, Robert Spiegel came on board to help us manage our human resources and affairs. Dr. Chesson came here and brought an energetic and experienced approach to curriculum and instruction as our assistant superintendent. And Allison Elmer, we found you, luckily, <laughs> and she became our permanent director of special education. And we saw spirit and morale come back to the Arlington Public Schools, and we have been fortunate, very fortunate, to have a steady and consistent hand as the leader of this district in Dr. Bodie, and I'd like to thank you for all the work you've done here. Um, I chose to run for re-election in the middle of this reinvigorated time. It was an easy decision for me, as there was more work I want, wished to accomplish. I wanted to help as much as I could with the opening of the new Thompson School, work on redistricting with my colleagues, and always look to revise, improve upon, update, and eliminate some of our policies. And thank you for allowing me to chair the Policies and Procedures Subcommittee pretty much my entire run here um, <laughs> and that I wasn't chair. My legal training helped me, I think, work out some of the problems and through the contract negotiations and, um, and my love for the arts always have served me well to advocate strongly for those. Um, I want the public to know that this committee works very hard, um, not just on every other Thursday night, but on evenings during the week, Saturday mornings, we, we did the self-governance project with Nancy Walzer, and you'll be seeing her again next month. Um, we created a, a tablet of standards and norms, which we sign every year to sort of justify what we're doing here. And we worked tirelessly in setting district goals and that were smart and overarching goals that were 
a showcase of our collective vision and hopes and dreams for everyone to see. Uh, we assembled alongside the AEA, thank you Siobhan, for all your work, and Linda for IBB training. Many hours of that helped us get to a new teacher's contract with many improvements for both sides. And now today, well, I think this is my kind of pre-Sergeant Pepper's moment. Um, <laughs> The Beatles needed to do their own thing for a bit before they could come together again and produce what was one of the most musically fascinating albums ever. And so deciding not to run this year wasn't easy for me. It wasn't. It, it was born of uh, pressures of being a partner in a small law firm 20 miles away, um, time to accomplish some personal goals like running a marathon in November. Um, <laughs> but most especially, it was my love for my family um, who are here tonight. And as you all know, there are many nights that we don't get to help with homework or sit down and have dinner with our families or drive to and from practice um, or just tuck them in at night. So on all those nights, I didn't say good night and I love you. Good night, I love you. I want to be sure to tell you all how much I love them and depend on them. And thank you, Laura, Ben, and Harper for being there and supporting me and my work through these six years on the committee. So thank you so much, guys. <laughs> and folks, this is not a soft and fuzzy school committee. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with soft and fuzzy. Instead, we took very seriously our charge as fiduciaries and partners for the public trust. We've worked to become more transparent. We saw our share of disputes, hard times, equally hard decisions. Our children worked hard, so we stayed late. All the while, it was my hope to engage the public and to seek out consensus and compromise between our constituents, the town, the schools, and each other. So I'm leaving now a school committee that is highly functioning, professional, and open-minded to new ideas. Folks, friends, colleagues, never get down. If you do, get right back up and know that there are so many in this town who are wishing to help with any research you might need on an issue or help with writing or fundraising on the topic of fundraising. Thank you, Arlington Education Foundation, for all you're doing for this town. And I'm going to continue my public service in, in Arlington. I have to. I hope in the near future I will see all of you on the other side of Mass Ave, hopefully first as a town meeting member in my precinct 11 and work once again with all of you at a town meeting convening in a month. I love the people in our town so much, and public service is the least I can do to show my appreciation for it. And thank you all very much for your continued hard work for our schools. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Oh, nice. Thank you. We're in recess for cake. Recess for cake. Well, now that we're on a sugar high, <laughs> when you're on the school committee and you have these early starts at 6.30, this is dinner. <laughs> um, I want to welcome uh, Olivia Sorensen. She is a student council vice president and president of the Arlington Youth Health and Safety Coalition. I hope you enjoyed the healthy cake. It was healthy, right? She only oh, yeah. grapes. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> oh. grapes. The kids these days. Hi. <laughs> Doing well. No, it's true. And uh, AEA Vice President Siobhan Foley, who is a third grade teacher at the Thompson. Correct. Oh, I got that right. <laughs> and you know, third grade is wonderful. I used to teach third grade once upon a time. It's so much fun. Who is our AEA rep at the uh, meeting here tonight? Uh, welcome to everyone. We do have artwork. And somewhere's. We start, I think we start over here and work our way around. Uh, this is all from Bishop, I believe. And, and I Hardy. Heard, oh, Bishop Hardy. and Hardy. Okay, yeah, it's a big sign there, Bishop and Hardy. Um, grade four is Chinese paper cuts. The fourth grade students invented their own unique Chinese paper cuts using colored construction paper. First, the students observed and discussed paper cuts by various Chinese artists. Chinese paper cutting is considered to be an ancient folk art and has been around since the second century. Uh, paper cuts are often considered to represent good luck and happiness, and they're usually hung on doors and windows during spe uh, special occasions. 
Then we go to grade five, the Tiffany stained glass. The fifth grade students created their own designs in stained glass windows inspired by the stained glass windows of Cambridge, Massachusetts artist Daniel Marr and the famous artist Louis Tiffany. Uh, Daniel Marr uses interesting materials and techniques to create his windows such as the glass bottoms of bottles and printing photographs onto glass. Louis Tiffany is well known for his Art Nouveau style windows and stained glass lamps. Grade one in the back, abstract collage. The first grade students created mixed media abstract collages inspired by various artists, including Miriam Quautes, a contemporary artist from Washington, D.C. Quautes uh, works in various media and creates beautiful abstract collages using maps, newspapers, pattern papers, and paint. Uh, then we go over to the third grade, uh, pattern creatures. The third grade students invented the creatures using black and white patterns to create the illusion of various shades of gray. First, the students observed and discussed etchings by Rembrandt. Rembrandt often used black lines and cross-hatching, lines drawn crossing over each other to create various shades of gray in his work. The students learned other black and white patterns can also create shades of gray, and the closer the patterns were on the paper, the darker the gray. And we have in the far right corner, from me, far left from the audience, uh, Mondrian abstract paintings. The second grade students created abstract paintings inspired by the artwork of Piet Mondrian, a Dutch painter, born 1872, died 1944. Mondrian was known for his grid-like abstract paintings where he only used the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, along with white and black. He took inspiration from his surroundings. One famous painting, Broadway Boogie Woogie, shows an abstraction of all the activity on Broadway in New York City, the cars, the lights, and the buildings. The second graders learned that abstract art isn't just random shapes and lines and colors, but also has meaning for the artist. And of course, I look forward to the next presentation of art that will include uh, the historic view of Andrios. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hold your breath. Mm, yeah. yeah, you know. Um, <coughs> 715, Human Rights Commission. Uh, um, we have, uh, who's reporting out on that? Uh, Dr. Seuss. What about the Sue Shuffler? Uh, okay. she's, oh. She will not be with us tonight. Oh, okay. So yeah. we're not doing that. Okay. So will we get an update at Yeah, we'll get an update. She, uh, she told me that uh, the numbers are fluctuating and she's not comfortable doing a presentation because things are changing right now. So she asked to be postponed to a later date. Oh, get okay. um, Dr. Seuss. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, Mr. Pierce can help me uh, fill in some gaps. Oh, actually, um, and Mr. Hainer. Um, so we met as a joint committee with the Human Rights Committee um, to look at uh, the, char the charge that we were potentially um, giving disparate sentences, uh, suspensions to uh, students of color than to white students, and, um, and that we were doing so um, more so than other towns. Uh, we met five times. Um, Dr. Bodhi and the administration presented a bunch of uh, information to us, um, and we poured over details and percentages and numbers, and um, we also looked at the issue of uh, the group homes in Arlington, which, um, uh, potentially, we've decided contributes to the disparate um, uh, suspension rates, and um, sort of got an update of some a successful program that's happened that's cut those rates um, of sentence of, of uh, suspensions, and um, in the end decided that while Arlington is like many communities in that this is potentially a problem that we have to constantly be aware of, that it in the end it didn't look like we were worse than other communities, but that it was, it was nevertheless something that we should uh, be thoughtful of and be concerned about and, and pay attention to. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think we felt that the administration was doing that. But. Mr. Hainer. Uh, I just want to add that uh, Dr. Bodie and the staff here have put, implemented a program 
uh, it, and I, I want to use the correct terms, uh, that supports and educates students. Uh, the students that you mentioned, it's sort of like, in, I, I don't know if it's appropriate, correct me if I'm wrong, I, a halfway or a, a, an integration of students. They're not being put plunged right from the group home into a classroom. And uh, there is uh, mm -hmm. an evaluation process that's involved and when they're ready, it goes in and, and, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's reduced uh, the, the issue of suspension uh, dramatically. And uh, I'm looking forward to the, I think that is part of the solution uh, that we've had, that, that a good solution that was implemented to deal with the issue that was brought forward. Okay. Uh, the, I'm told that the uh, Arlington Human Rights Commission has voted to disband this joint committee. We need to do so, so I'd like to see a motion to disband the uh, uh, joint subcommittee. So moved move by Mr. Pierce, second by Dr. Seuss, uh, Dr. Allison Ampey. Can, can I just, can someone recap for me? I, I know that we did this because there were allegations of disproportionate things. Um, did that charge go to any higher level or was this the appropriate way to address it? You know, is, is there anything that, else beyond that we're, oh, oh, I mean, was there um, legal action being brought? Yeah, or, or, yeah or anything else? That, uh, yeah, uh, to our knowledge, there were some threats of some, but not, nothing went through, to our knowledge. Okay, so the, this right. is, yeah. we've addressed the charge, and that's all, oh, okay. Thank you. Sorry, I just didn't know. Mr. Hainer. I just want to be clear. I, I'm not aware of any threats. The, okay. the, 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 the mm -hmm. town council said, as far as he knows, it was, it was the town took it upon itself, mm. Human Rights Commission and the school committee took it upon to form the joint com uh, committee. I'd just like to add that, and uh, I'll defer to the chair, but we have a report mm -hmm. that was presented. Should we, should we not accept that report prior to disbanding the group or can that be done afterwards? Um, is the report the report in the, uh, yeah. Yes. So we, we can uh, accept that report as well. Uh, would you like to make, uh, I'll withdraw, um, I move to. Well, uh, let me I, I'm going to uh, table the motion. Uh, motion to table the motion to disband. So moved. Do, uh, Dr. Allison Ampey, second by Dr. Seuss. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That, that's tabled. Now, Mr. Hainer. I move that we accept the uh, report as presented to the committee. <laughs> um, motion by Mr. Hainer, second by Dr. Seuss. Uh, any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. Uh, I need a motion to take the so other moved, motion off moved. the table by Dr. Allison Ampey, second by uh, Ms. Starks. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. All in favor of the motion to disband this uh, joint subcommittee. All uh, say aye. 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 Opposed? It is disbanded. Uh, thank everybody, both from our side of the street and the Human Rights Commission for taking a very serious look at this. It's something we're concerned about. We want to maintain equity in the schools. Next, uh, Human Rights Commission Arlington, no, um, resolution not to raise the charter school cap. We have before us a motion, uh, a resolution that comes from the Agawam School Committee that they have passed. Uh, uh, and basically, the therefore be it resolved the, uh, that the Agawam School Committee opposes any lift of the cap to charter schools in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, and many school committees across the state have been adopting this resolution as well. So do I have a motion to adopt this for Arlington? So moved. Moved by Ms. Starks, second by Mr. Hainer. Any discussion? Uh, Dr. Allison Ampey. So in reading the resolution, I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's fairly long, but I had some questions about some of the paragraphs. It's, it's in the usual whereas thing. Um, I just, I didn't know where some of the numbers and things they talked about came from, and I didn't have a chance to fact check everything. The stuff where they talk about um, findings from Auditor Bump, those, I checked mm. those, those are all fine, but I just, I'm a little uncomfortable 
about some of the assertions. I wondered if we could clip some of the paragraphs, but still have resolve. I mean, well, essentially, the, essentially, the resolution is the therefore okay. uh, be it resolved that that that. I don't like, it's the whereas is, I mean, some of the whereas is that I don't like, but if it's the resolution I'm happy with, does it matter about the whereas is or? Generally, or just the backup. Whereas is a backup. <laughs> the, the, the force of the thing is the therefore. Okay. Does this need to be in our name? Yes. Yeah, we, it will, we it change, will be changed. We will change the Agawam to Arlington uh, and uh, the signature lines and change the signature line. That's the way they do it. We'd sign it and we'd send it off to M We'd notify MASC that we adopted the, the resolution. But will we send it with all the whereases on it? Uh, we we yeah. um, we could just do the therefore be it resolved, if that's the wish of the committee. It's, well, which, uh, it, the ones I don't like are the uh, paragraph one, which is about the percents. Mm -hmm. Paragraph two, which is about fewer English language learners. Those are all true. Mm -hmm. um, okay, if that. Mm -hmm. I know those to be true. Yeah, I, you mean I, number two? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's okay. Um, that's if you guys can internally check some of them. It was just. They don't have any sites. Um, paragraph four <laughs> yep. about enrollment yes. problems. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. And then paragraph five. Yes, that's yes, absolutely that is true. also true. Yep. <laughs> okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Well, if you guys I don't know can. One, but no. if, can you're Mr. Hainer. Last night there was a uh, group that uh, met on charter schools, and uh, mm -hmm. just about every one of these questions. Uh, yeah, it was asked and verified. Yeah. I, I don't want to take anything away from the other members that were there, but uh, I learned an awful lot last night uh, in facts, uh, and I'd like to give credit to our chair. He did an excellent presentation on the funding, and uh, I think I'm prepared to go out uh, into the masses and, and, and go against this just for the mm -hmm. things that you presented last mm -hmm. night. Uh, Dr. Allison Anthony. I had to arrive late to that same meeting because I was required for quorum at a different meeting. Yeah. <laughs> so that's probably part of why I'm behind all of you on these things. So, okay. Sorry. I Thank withdraw you. my concerns. Okay. Any other comments or questions on the charter school resolution? Just a co comment. Do we then have to rewrite it with our name? And uh, we would just insert or Arlington in so there. We can, we can vote on this now even though it's not. Yeah, I mean, yeah. With the changes that we need to <coughs> Okay. Yeah, we're, okay. we're yeah, substituting work. Arlington for Agawam. And uh, Dr. Bodie for Yeah. yeah. Okay. The, uh, Mr. Hainer. The motion should read uh, to accept the resolution as presented with the appropriate changes relative to uh, our school committee. Excellent. Uh, that's a friendly amendment, and I accept it. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous vote. Thank you. Um, superintendent's report. Well, I suppose I'm taking advantage of the fact that there, the agenda isn't too extensive tonight. So I actually have, uh -huh. <laughs> so I actually have a, a few things to, to talk to you, with you about. Um, first of all, we're going to have a, an updated calendar in May, but one change that I think is important to, to mention now, and it will go out to kindergarten parents in a in a letter that will be inviting them to their, to their uh, school on May 10th. And that is, we've decided since uh, we brought the calendar in January of now doing the annual, the screening of kindergarten students at the end of this school year rather than at the very beginning of the school year. Now, what the effect of that will be is that on the Tuesday after Labor Day, we will have just simply a visit to the school by kindergarten students, and, and that will, what the nature of that visit will be yet to uh, be described. It will not, it'll be coming with their parents, it'll be a very short visit, but they'll be able to go to school with their brothers and sisters if they, assuming that they have an older sibling going. On, the, on Wednesday and on Thursday, We'll divide the class into two parts so they have a whole day with a smaller group of students so they can learn a little bit more about the routines and the school. And then on Friday of that week, they'll start a full day uh, with their entire class. And we feel that this would be, uh, be 
preferable to go back to doing screening in the spring, and this time it will be in June because um, of the park schedule. But we felt that it would be, would be better in terms of uh, not only looking at what services uh, students might need, but also in developing class lists. So that's, that's a plan, and that will be in uh, the new calendar in May, and it will also be communicated to parents. And speaking of kindergarten, we've had, a, we're just on the tail end, actually, of our formal registration process. And this year, we instituted a new online registration. And interestingly, when it opened at midnight the first night, I think by 12:15 we had 30 or 40 registrations. <laughs> Mm -mm. No, People think they don't have, they're yeah. not going to get in? <laughs> well, and that's even with knowing that anything within a certain window of time was still considered stamp date the first date. But, we, <laughs> but people were just anxious to get in there. Um, the vast majority, I think we had over 300 of the registrations uh, online. Maybe even more than, even that, more now. than that now. Even more than that now. Oh, that's great. What um, so what's the number now? Well, <laughs> I know it's going to go oh, up. Hold on. <laughs> uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Seuss. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I was just curious what the number is now, but I, I, knowing that it's going to go up. It, it, would, it is, and it's a little bit higher than it was last year this time. Uh, in terms of processed applications, we have slightly over 400, but we also have another uh, roughly 43 or 45 that are in process, and every day there's more registrations coming in. Okay. So we have a, already a, a fairly sizable class in its March. Yeah. Dr. Allison Ampey. Um, I wanted to ask a question. This isn't so much for Dr. Bodie, but for the committee. Um, I heard from a constituent today that he had heard that the school, he had heard someone say that the school committee believes that it has a handle on kindergarten assignments for this fall and that with the Thompson edition, there's confidence that class sizes will be kept under control. And <laughs> Who said that? Well, that's. I don't know. <laughs> any, that is any, any idea where it came? Okay, so it wasn't any of us. Nope. Mm. Nope. I, I did Dr. have. Dr. Seuss. Uh, I did have a conversation um, with a constituent today, and I was saying how good, how how had we done really well this year in terms of the kindergarten sizes that that we hadn't seen the high numbers that we'd had in previous years. So we were, so you mean the, the, class, the class sizes were much better. Um, right. I mean the class the, for this so year. So if you look at the kindergarten classes 15, 16. this year, it is much better than it's been in previous years. Yeah. Okay. For 15, That's, 16, but we're not talking about 16, uh, 17. Uh, no. Uh, right. Right. But okay. I mean, we don't know, right? Okay. So maybe it got I, past. I, we were also talking about this worry that somehow that because of McKibben numbers that there's going to be class sizes of 28. <laughs> later on and I was just talking about how you have to look at the kindergarten class sizes they're not you know if the kindergarten class sizes are 22 it's unlikely for them to get to 28 a few years later and we we're, we're just sort of talking about that issue so okay that was okay thank you okay. Dr. Bodie thank you so so as we move forward in, in, with registrations we are going to be moving, and we are there, in terms of having an online registration process. It doesn't mean that we're still not making appointments and people can come in uh, for registration. The, the other um, feature we have to this process is that our registrar has made a video. And that video is available to people to, to describe the, the registration process. Uh, he's made a video to describe how you go into the parent portal to update your demographics. That's and awesome. so we're trying to make this as um, user-friendly as possible because there's so many more people that just being able to come out in the late afternoon to, regis to register is, is, uh, can be a burden. So, so far it's, it's going well. In fact, uh, in, in past years when we've had opening day of registration, we'd have lo long lines. This year I think we had 20 people total. So it was a it was a it was a major major upgrade. Thanks. Um, we we uh, have sent out and we sent it out last week a calendar survey because we've been talking about calendars, and uh, 
this was the survey that all of you approved for, um, for getting input both from teachers and from parents. This survey um, has already had for parents over 700 responses. So it's, a, it's, it's already been received well. What we do know though is we put this survey out through um, Blackboard Connect. In fact, I sent out another email today about this that we, we sent it out through uh, the emails that we have in PowerSchool, but we don't have the emails of every student. Now, as we go forward with our registration process, that will change. But in order for us to have emails, parents have to go into the portal and update them. So we've, I, we sent out all the links for how to do that. The survey is live, but we send you the survey link. And we've already, I think since I sent that email, we have 14, uh, 15 or 16 people who have gone into the portal to change that. I'm not a parent, so I was not giving, and I still don't have access to the survey, yet I did get that email. Just be prepared yes. for, for other people that are on the, the mailing list to respond to you and say what survey and things of that nature. I'm just, no, I understand no, that's where right. it's coming from. Uh, right. The, the reason why we send it out through our notification system is that that is just simply to parents. What was the email that went out today is a subscriber listserv. Right. I just, and so there are a lot of people that are on that listserv. You serve. just may get people saying, what survey at you? That's uh, all. That, that could happen, yep. yes. But hopefully it was clear that this is for parents to go in and do this. But we will we'll send it out to, to them, the link. And it's live until April 4th uh, at midnight, actually 11.59, and because uh, we have to turn it off at some point. But one of, the, one of the things that parents can do if they decide there was a comment they want to add or what ended up happening the first day it was out is that inadvertently the uh, teacher survey, which has the same questions, went out. So people didn't have a chance to put in their demographic, but it's, it's, that's all been fixed and you can go back in and change it, add any in information if you want, and whatever your last submission is is what gets tallied. Dr. Allison Ampey. Okay, I'm being good and waiting. Mm -hmm. um, the people who are changing, who realize they don't have an up-to-date email or something in, in the power school if they change it will they then get sent a link yes later okay uh, so. 16 just happened late afternoon today no i know they updated their email but does that mean then they get the survey link sent out okay yes that, that's, that's what that's what we're saying that's what okay I didn't um, miss that uh, mike remy who was who, who monitors it as soon as it was updated he then sent out the email okay. to them with the link okay great thank you mm-hmm so I think we'll get some, uh, some pretty good data, and we still have uh, another week and a half almost for the, the information. Um, one of the, uh, had a meeting uh, yesterday. There's an advisory committee for the Stratton Project, and it's made up of administrators, teachers, parents, and we have been meeting um, fairly regularly for the last few months to talk about a lot of the issues that come up because the architects want to have feedback mm -hmm. as you go through the process. And we had one just this week with um, our modular company as well as the architects and worked out a number of details that um, needed to be discussed. But the thing that I wanted the committee to know, because this was different information than what you might have been aware of, the modular company is now going to be on site in April. Oh, wow. great. And uh, Mr. Hanna will be sending that out, and I think probably already has, to the parents of Stratton and certainly the teachers know. And that is going to affect um, a lot of, you know, just the routines in terms of actually how you get out to the playground. And, and that's going to happen as, as, we, as the equipment uh, starts being brought in. And they're moving it up because an interesting thing I didn't know is that um, when you get close to Memorial Day weekend on either side of it, there's sometimes restrictions on these really big trucks traveling. Uh, and so rather than get caught and not having everything here, they've moved up the schedule. Mr. Hainer, does that move up the projected completion schedule? No. <laughs> <laughs> Now that was a concern for teachers, but what we, we know is that 
uh, <coughs> the completion schedule will be August 22nd, that Monday, but then that, that week will be an opportunity to get in and do data stuff and, uh, and, and, and do the moving in. Because we're gonna have furniture stored uh, during that uh, time from the end of school until they can move in because the construction project actually begins and they'll be on site earlier too. The construction starts right away. So everything has to be pulled out of classrooms. And so teachers are going, are going through the process right now of having to decide what's gonna be stored for the year and what, what do they need next year and then labeling all the furniture, that will all be done. Uh, so another point of discussion is storage because you know we're not going to have a lot of storage on site, but we're we're looking into different kinds of storage pods for the year. Mr. Hainer, well said. Thank you. Okay. Um, anything else on the Stratton? Nope. Go ahead. Nope. So we're we're moving ahead, and so teachers will have about two weeks before school starts to to, to set up their classrooms. Um, I want to, uh, sort of a nice thing that I just learned this oh, a day or so ago, is that one of, of our library paraprofessional, um, Liza Haley, who is the, you know Liza yes. down at Thompson, who is the, para, is the uh, paraprofessional librarian at, uh, at Thompson, who has done, I have to say, an incredible job, because you know we had the books for Bill, and she was very much part of that process in getting the books and bringing the books in because when she, when she started in the library, there was the books in boxes to set up and she has set up a very welcoming uh, place for Thompson students. At any rate, we just found out that she is this year's recipient of the Friends Scholarship awarded by the Massachusetts School Library Association. And this is scholarship is awarded once a year to a student in school library certification program. So she's going, she is in a program to become a licensed uh, librarian. So congratulations to her. Excellent. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. great. Um, <clears throat> the, I wanna, <laughs> at the next meeting, um, I'm going to bring forward, I just want to give you a notice on that. We're going to bring forward a candidate to be, to, for you to, to meet uh, who has volunteered to be a member of the Vision 2020 sta uh, Standing Committee. Mm -hmm. And the process they have is that the superintendent uh, makes, an, makes a nomination, you approve the nomination, and, and then there's the appointment. Mm -hmm. Vision 2020 has already put out a, an all call and advertisement for anybody who would like to be on the committee and we do have someone. So it'll be at the next meeting that that, that, will, that will happen. Um, I also, t this is the end of March and we've talked about having a update on where we are with district goals, my goals this year. And I thought that I would go through that because it also relates to one of them relates very much to the task force. And it may be an opportunity for people that are on the task force also to talk about where we are in that process. Because of the, the two goals that I specifically pointed out uh, for this year, well, it's close the achievement gap. Th th that's really not something we're gonna really talk about in terms of data. But what I will say about that is that you know, if you, if you, unless you change what you're doing or, or, or expand what you're doing, you're gonna potentially not get the kind of change you'd like to see. And, and some of the changes that we have done uh, this year, and I think it's actually quite significant, is not that we haven't been having uh, data meetings we have, this, and you've, you've heard about how, how we've had to have traveling subs to be able to do that. This year with the new elementary schedule, we have every Tuesday we have common planning and of course oftentimes that can happen uh, data, looking at data in those meetings, but we have a very formal uh, time that's set aside uh, in, those, in those afternoons to looking at data. And uh, we're looking specifically at a lot of our students that are struggling and looking at what we can do to help them. We also this year were very fortunate to get some additional title Title I money, which has provided extra tutoring uh, interventions at both, at all of our Title I schools, um, 
at Thompson, Hardy, and Pierce. So that's been that's been uh, something that we'd love to have done more, of, but it's terrific that we can do it. So th there is there is a lot going on in that, and of course um, we'll we'll just see as we move into the into park. Um, and I don't know if later you want to have any questions about where we are on the park implementation, but yeah. Well, we'll, uh, well Mr. Hainer, nice I don't want to take away from the time for your report. I think that might take a, a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Do it to the next meeting? I, I would prefer that and, uh, and, and so give us a little heads up of mm -hmm. direction so we can prepare ourselves for you. Okay. I, I would like to have something in writing before we talk about it. So right. if we can get a, yep. you know, a, a summary report in the uh, agenda, uh, so we'd have a foundation for asking questions. Okay. All right, just my note here. Okay. So the other goal is develop a plan to address space needs related to an, to to anticipated enrollment growth over the next ten years. I don't think there's anything that's occupied more of my time <laughs> this year <laughs> than this particular one, um, in, including you know all of the the issues around enrollment, uh, the different plans. It, we're, we're dealing with a very complex situation in terms of all of the moving parts around around this issue. Uh, the task force has been meeting, and where we are presently with that is that we have a meeting next week. It's going to be on Tuesday. The time has changed, however, to 6 o'clock, and it'll be in this room. At that time, uh, this task force is going to be given an, an, an interim report by uh, HMFH architectural firm that, has, that is conducting a more in-depth study of the, of the cost of renovation at Gibbs is one part of the study. And the other one is the feasibility and cost of doing an addition at Odison in one of two school-owned school -owned properties, which is really the back parking lot, which is really the front of the school, and the soccer field behind the school on the Mass Ave site. And so both of those are going on simultaneously. Today, architects, the architect, structural engineer, Mechanical engineers, cost estimator, were at Gibbs <coughs> doing a, a doing a tour. So I think we'll have some. We're certainly going to have an interim report on Tuesday. So that's next Tuesday, March 29th, 6 p.m. in this here. room. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I, I I don't. I'm wondering whether you want to have a, a more in-depth discussion. Maybe not tonight about the complexities of all that we are facing with respect to respect to this in terms of potential overrides, what are the options, and so forth. That might be something we want to have down the road. Uh, well, we, yeah. we should be getting a report back from the uh, School Enrollment Task Force. There's going to be another uh, long-range planning meeting in the interim, so I think that by receiving the reports back from those two groups, we'll, we'll have plenty to talk about. So we should probably have that on the agenda. Dr. Seuss. Oh, yeah, yeah I agree. I, I just want to say that um, people are so, are all over the places mm -hmm. on this and that it, it might be confusing to mm -hmm. present something as complex a plan mm -hmm. when we really have no idea at this point, I think. We don't have a plan right now. There, in terms of the funding mechanism, no, there's not. A plan yet, but, but, but think, people you know, are working think, very hard, and I suspect there will be very soon. Mm -hmm. I think we're, mm -hmm. yeah, there'll be something to talk about yeah. by the time we meet next. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Starks. Um, I just I wanted to bring up something about the school enrollment task force. I don't know if this is the right time or the subcommittee reports out. But Do it either. Given course. that we're talking about, talking it. about right. it now. So um, I'm concerned because the timeline is so short. Um, that we as a school committee who are tasked with the decision if and when we decide to go with the Gibbs, mm -hmm. that we have not started on trying to at least make a list of the things that we need to know in order to decide if we're going to do one grade or three grades at the Gibbs. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I think that that work can be done simultaneously. It can be done now in the background. We can assign that work to a subcommittee, even though I know we only have two weeks left of this group filling that subcommittee. Um, but I feel a real sense of urgency to do what we can, when we can, as soon as we can, so that they're never waiting on us. Um, and I know that that's a decision that we have to make if and when they make the Gibbs decision. And I know that if, if the decision is to go with Audison, that that work may not get used. But I think in preparation, I would really like to know that, that, there, is, that there is a subcommittee who is going to help drive the thought process that we're going to, of gathering the data, at least mm -hmm. helping make the list of things that we want to see so that we can make that decision. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hainer. I'd be willing to serve. Um, if it's yeah. well, I think, before, I think yeah, before we uh, mention who's willing to serve, I think we should send it to one of CIA. the uh, subcommittees, and I think the CIA would be the logical one. So, if Ms. Starks is making that motion, I would like to make that motion. To, I move to uh, direct CIAA to start um, the process of coming up with the information, the list of information, the questions that we want to have answered so that we can understand better whether we should go with one grade or three grades. Uh, second you. by Dr. Seuss. Um, any que uh, Dr. Allison Abbey. I was going to second because I wanted to enthusiastically second mm -hmm. the idea. No, because I think it's important. It's not just so that we're the decisions making is not held up by us, but also so that we have the longest possible time to mm -hmm. vet the ideas and think, you know, because we want to be looking what the educational advantages are. We want to look at the logistical yeah. differences. Um, and we want to be doing it in as wide a time span as possible instead of having this crunched right. up thing. Um, uh, so. Mr. Thielman. The uh, okay, so so basically, it's a it's a, an evaluation of whether <coughs> the the Gibbs should be a sixth grade or should be sixth, seventh, and eighth. Right. Mm -hmm. Basically, the side by side comparison. Go for. Yeah. Okay. Um, <coughs> I refresh my memory. Who's on the committee going into in ten right days? Right now. No, no. I know who's on the committee now. Who's on the committee? We the don't three, know yet. Judd, Cindy, and I are for the moment. But in. Uh, I know, I know, I know. So, yeah. uh, so do but you? I think we should meet in the next like two weeks and start. But at actually, least start yeah. a list. Well, uh, actually, what, what happens in between the election and the first meeting? Is, yeah. is there are nothing? We're, we're not still, reorganized yet, so we still so exist in our up be, until then. Yeah, yeah up until then. So that's that. The current subcommittee can meet until the new subcommittee is charged. And, uh, and I'm sure that after the election, you'll be able to publish uh, a list of uh, what your thoughts are. Okay. Mr. Hainer. Just for my clarification, I thought the motion was to, for CIA uh, to make up a list of questions for the committee to consider. Mm -hmm. And I thought Mr. Thielman said a side-by-side -side, uh, evaluation of the two, two programs. Yes, we want to make a list of all the things we want to see side by side mm -hmm. for the differences of six or six, okay. seven. And mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Dr. Seuss. Um, <coughs> so I just want to say to actually to the audience at home, um, I know that some of this work is being done with the teachers, which is great and laudable, and I know that there's some outreach and discussion among teachers and potentials to visit Needham, I've heard. Mm -hmm. um, so I enthusiastically second the idea of the school committee doing some of this work in parallel. Um, we also have, at some point, to reach out to the larger community, um, and that's a very important, very necessary step. It, it's felt premature at this stage, um, but but we recognize that that is has to happen and will happen. Mr. Thielman. So when when does the committee have to take a decision on whether? When does the committee have to take a vote on the, on the uh, educational design of the, of the Gibbs? Well, first step is that the task force has to make a recommendation as to whether uh, they think that we should go with having Gibbs be a school or whether we should add an addition. Now then, once that recommendation right. is there, then the issue is going to be, well, should it be a single grade or should it be a six through eight? One of, the, one of the things we know is that whatever the 
whatever project is going to be is going to require debt exclusion override. Mm -hmm. And I think that people would probably agree they would prefer to know which it is right. prior to uh, that, that, that override. Now, at the moment, there is no set date. It could be in June, um, or it could wait to the fall. So if it's in June, and I don't know when that, that is going to be decided, there, there is some urgency to start moving this process along, which we have started to do yeah. on, on, on the, uh, the school side. But if it's in the fall, it's, it, there's still some argument for moving forward with this thinking mm -hmm. because a decision needs to probably be made. My suggestion is that you come to a conclusion um, this year, this school year, probably in June. If we, don't, if we have the override in June, then you probably need to make a decision in May. So the, yeah, I mean, I think, okay, so I'll try to get the committee to meet in the next 10 days. I'll, try, I'll put out a doodle and see if we can get a meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and then the new committee will have to uh, yeah, just kind of hand over. Yeah, hand something to hand over. But I also think, you know, this is, to, to do this right, this is done. I don't think it's a separate, I don't think it's a parallel exercise. I think it's done in conjunction yeah. with yeah. the school administration. Exactly. Otherwise, it doesn't really have much value. Oh, absolutely. Right. So absolutely. I think it's a question of mm -hmm. setting a meeting, having you there. Of course. And the principal mm -hmm. and the assistant superintendent <clears throat> and mm -hmm. talking about the research and the thinking you've done so far, where that's at, mm -hmm. and then uh, trying to figure out how we're gonna, the data and the information and the questions mm -hmm. that need to be answered to answer to, to, to decide which is the best mm -hmm. educational decision mm -hmm. for the town. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and then one, the one question, the one thing I'm, I'm curious about is have you, have you not, you had, you did that sixth grade, mm -hmm. that report on on the challenges of uh, of uh, K6. Yeah, right, the, mm -hmm. K, the K6 model. So that gives us a lot of information to start with, I think. Is there any data analysis you, that you've done of, of like a, um, growth scores at, at, at like in the Needham School or anything like that? Have you done any of that sort of thing? Um, I've looked at their scores. Do I have done anything more than that? No. An analysis, I mean, analysis of when they moved yeah. Into that, well, they, this is their eighth year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So SGPs is a more recent phenom. So there's no way to compare. There's no to way you don't have that data. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well. But they do very well. Yeah, I know they do. They do very well. <laughs> I know that. I know they do. All right. Well, we'll we'll try to get the committee to meet in the next ten days. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Are we going to? Do we need to vote? I think so. Oh, we do need to vote. There's a motion on the table. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous vote. Thank you. Um, Oh, uh, yeah. Where, where are we? Uh, <laughs> well, do you want, I don't know, but Kirsten's got her hand up. Oh, okay. Um, I had two things also on this same topic. Should I bring them up now? Go right ahead. Okay. So the first one is an idea that I wanted to throw out there for the school enrollment task force people to think about, mm -hmm. which is if we <coughs> end up going with using the Gibbs as a school, <coughs> would it be possible to place modulars on the, on the school property, either on the side of the street or on the basketball court, and have them to house the tenants who are currently there? So I'm thinking the Keeler program and part <coughs> of the ACA or the preschool. And I'm suggesting this because it's something that we own the space for. We could potentially privately fund the modulars um, there is when I've looked at it from above there is space definitely along that um, I can't remember the name of the street the one the parking lot comes off of there Foster. is space there um, come doing a second wing next to the um, other building um, and it make it, it gives a solution for some of the problems of displacing the tenants so I just thought it, um, it was worth throwing out into the mix. Mr. Hainer. Uh, Adam Chapelain has received an, in, a lot of suggestions from different people and things mm -hmm. like that. And I apologize if this comes off offensive. I don't mean to. My understanding of the task force is to focus on the enrollment issues itself mm -hmm. and the solution in that, and that mm -hmm. focus there. Mm -hmm. There are outside areas and things of this mm -hmm. nature. Um, I would recommend that you pass that on to the, the, 
the town manager mm -hmm. because he has taken it upon himself to look for solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, for, that's what okay. she's asking I'll, us to do. I'll, I'll, I'll send it. I'll send it. <laughs> I guess. I guess what I'm saying is, the, my feeling is, as a member of the task force, that's not our purview. Mm -hmm. the, purview the individual taxpayers and stuff go to the town manager independent of the task mm -hmm. force. That's all I'm saying. I'll send it to him. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he's heard it now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I, I would send it to him I don't think he stays anyway. up and watches that. I know you, you don't. You don't know if they're going to need that space for staging for construction, if that's what we're doing. But certainly, an interesting uh, question yeah. to ask. It's such yeah. a, it's another. We idea. should we should ask every question and we can. Yep, yeah. absolutely. That's it's what we've been doing all along. You know, it's doable, and we control the space. So mm -hmm. I thought mm -hmm. it was worth throwing out there. Okay, so that was mm -hmm. the first thing. The second thing is that. I've been listening to this discussions um, at the BR budget revenue BRTF um, meeting that we had on Friday on Monday, um, and uh, I happened to sit next to Mr. Cole, who very kindly answered my question before I had a chance to ask it, mm -hmm. which was, "Isn't there something we can do to speed up the timeline on the Gibbs?" Mm -hmm. um, my concern is that with discussions of having overrides potentially or, or debt exclusions potentially going into the fall or later, mm -hmm. that that pushes the study starts from mm -hmm. the spring to um, the fall and that mm -hmm. all of that ends up rolling into mm -hmm. a, a delayed start date or opening date of the school from September 18 to September 19. Mm -hmm. I think that is not good for several reasons. Mm -hmm. One, it wastes money because we're gonna end up having to have modulars at the Audison. Two, I think the Audison is not a ideal site. Mm -hmm. I, not ideal is, is putting it incredibly mildly. I think it's really a difficult site to put modulars and have that be a functional school. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, I would really like to see us push towards having, working towards the goal of September 18 being our site. And as such, I think we need to look for the money to do this study, mm -hmm. potentially not all of us, but could we get some of it from us, maybe some of it from, from um, capital planning, maybe some of it from the finance committee, split it somehow so that we have it, so we can start the study, you know, assuming this, again, you know, understanding we don't know which road we're going, but if we go down that road, I think we need to find that money and we need to get the start study started as quickly as possible. And I think we as a school committee need to have this on our minds. And as soon as we, we convene, assuming I'm back here again, um, mm -hmm. I think we need to be taking this up and really we need to be talking to our partners mm -hmm. across the town and seeing what we can do. Maybe there's some way that we can work out a deal where if we front some of the money, then if it turns mm -hmm. out we don't need the modulars later, they can pay us, you know, that it could come back to us because we've saved that money on the other end. Um, I don't know, but I think we should start having these talks. Um, not totally sure who should be having them, but uh, I, I know it's a tight schedule, but sometime I think this is where we as a town and even though we have a lot of people we're kind of a small town in mm -hmm. terms of how we function we function really tightly we can move when we really want to move you know, we did an override in ungodly short amounts of time and it passed um, I think we could make the Gibbs remodel happen if we need to but the first key point is getting that money so the design gets started on time or else we're really in trouble so sorry so are you asking for the committee to communicate to the uh, to the appropriate uh, folks on the other side? I was more saying this because we can't discuss this except an open meeting. And I want you all to hear what I had to say. Mm -hmm. uh, partly, I might not be at this table with you in another <laughs> one. Um, but you will be. Um, I think it's something all of us should be taking up. I'm not sure who the specific tasks should go to, but I think we should all have it on our minds, and I think we should be doing whatever we can. Mr. Thurman. So it would take an allocate. It's, the, it's, it's a sizable amount of money. It's mm -hmm. about three quarters of a million dollars to do it. Much mm -hmm. more. Is it much more than? Yes. May I? Yeah, go ahead, uh, Superintendent. The we don't know what the cost of renovation is, but it was, it, let's say if, hypothetically it's. 15 million, all right? 
Generally speaking, your designer costs are 20% of the cost. Okay. We're fronting right now the Thompson design, mm -hmm. and we're using the estimates that were about $2.5 million. So we're, we're fronting right now about 250000 in order to get the design study for Thompson, which is a, a sizable amount of money. Mm -hmm. In addition to, the school department um, with the finance committee is working on the, the money to actually do this study. So the, com so the school mm -hmm. department is, is doing 25000 there. So we're, we have been doing this, but it's really a lot of money to do the design on Gibbs or the design on the addition either. Okay. Dr. Allison Ampey. So not to, well, I, I guess I, I am contradicting you because 20% of 15 million works out to 3 million. Um, the numbers that we're talking about for the high school are only in the 1.5 million. So I'm having a hard time believing that it would be that much. The numbers that Mr. Cole had were around 750,000. Um, and that's the number that I was thinking about. Um, mm. So I'm not. Dr. Seuss. Oh, uh, just I, I think that potentially we're going to have a lot more clarity in, in a week or two. Um, I think this issue is on many people's minds. And there have been sort of d conversations, and, and hopefully at the long range planning committee, mm -hmm. um, there'll be more. So uh, I think you're not alone, is what I'm getting the sense when I talk to people informally that um, in, in wanting to find a solution. So, okay. but I. I I also suspect that it'd be hard to take it from school from school <laughs> administration, you know, reserves. But 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 that there but there are other ways. I mean, there's bans mm -hmm. and there's all sorts of other ways to do things. It just mm -hmm. they're risky, but they're doable. I, I mean, I mean, the question is this: is that does the committee want to? You know, I, I stated it at the uh, long range planning meeting. I know you did as well. Uh, but we're speaking as one per one person in the room. Does the committee itself want to say, uh, to express a sense of urgency for the reasons you stated to have a, a facility opened for these students in September 2018? That's the question. And if you're nodding your head, Mr. Pierce, would you like to make a motion? I'd like to move for us to, um, well, it's, Consensus. Uh, for for a consensus on that, you, you could have a sense of the committee or just a yeah straw vote. But what are we voting on? Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> well, that, that's the question. Is that we? It's a sense of the committee that we desire uh, that we do everything possible to uh, ensure that it, the expanded middle school facilities be open um, for September two thousand eighteen. Say so move. So move. Second. Does the secretary have that language? Because <laughs> I don't. Move to get a consensus. The school committee to get a consensus of the desire to do everything possible to ensure a middle school to be open for September 2018. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hainer. I just add an, an, an adequate s s middle school for the population that we have mm -hmm. at that point. Well, obviously, that's what we're, we're okay. pushing for. I think. If I, I think if we're. It's understood uh, in the motion. That's fine. The motion, motion is to express our sense of urgency for a timeline and a completion date of September 2018. Any discussion, Dr. Seuss? Um, yeah, I, I don't think I'd vote for that motion to be honest, because I, though I feel a sense of urgency, have a sense of urgency. Um, there's also the issue about getting things right, and I know that speed can often be at the expense of getting things right. And ultimately, I think that's more important. It may not be at the expense. I, I would say, yes, a sense of urgency with the caveat that we make sure that everything is you know, done, done well. Um, but that's an important caveat, so. Mr. Hainer. I, I agree with everything you've said, but I think the Enrollment Task Force Committee was set up just for that. Mm. That uh, with the excitement and uh, going forward with the members from the school committee, uh, the breaks were put on very quickly the first couple of meetings by other members of the committee, uh, basically saying just what you said. Um, in my, it's my interpretation from the other night at the budget uh, meeting 
Uh, several members from the enrollment task force were there. Uh, some of those break, breaking people felt this urgency as well, but with also mm -hmm. the issue of going forward with uh, mm -hmm. doing it correctly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I think by voting for an urgency doesn't mean we're not going to take the time uh, to do it. The, it. It said, if it basically, we're not saying do it. We're saying do the best you can to get there mm -hmm. as a goal. Mm -hmm. It may not be achievable in order to make sure that everything is done correct. Dr. Allison Ampey. Okay. I'll vote for this motion because I'm not, I'm asking us to push for urgency. I'm not looking for shortcuts. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. if we do not, the bottom line is the timeline that we're talking about, if we do not act with a sense of urgency, it will not happen. Mm -hmm. So it is basically, we have to be, we have to move that fast, mm -hmm. not taking shortcuts, doing everything we need to mm -hmm. do, but we have to move fast or it will not happen. So. Mr. Thielman. So I think the reality is this is, you know, if we don't take a spring vote, um, if there's not a debt exclusion vote in the spring, then you run the risk of, uh, of not opening by 18. That's the, that's the reality. Um, so, but, but, so I'm going to vote for the motion because I think it just, it's, a, it's a resolution that says we all want the school to open in 2018. I just, I don't, I just don't know how the process is going to play itself out. I, I think that the cost of a design is, uh, I don't know what the right number, I mean, mm -hmm. the superintendent said it's 20%, so I mean, I, I have no reason to mm -hmm. question that. Um, I, I'm not sure we can, we can't fund the design without a debt exclusion. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can't, there's no, we don't have the funds in the town budget to do it without a debt exclusion. Now we could borrow the money, I guess, and then pay it back once the debt exclusion is passed, but we don't have the funds to do that debt exclusion. So I think, I think, um, the school committee, the school enrollment task force, the message to the school enrollment task force members who are, who are members of the school committee is very clear. Mm -hmm. We're, I think I'm hearing loud and clear, push, push, push for 2018. At the same time, I just think we need to keep our feet on the ground mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a debt exclusion that has to occur. There's a design that has to occur. Um, and there's lots of unknowns in the construction of a facility that's as old as the Addison. Mm -hmm. You mean the Gibbs? The Gibbs, and yeah, right. <laughs> the Gibbs, thank you, Kiersey, yeah, right, right, right. Interesting vintage, vintage too. Ms. Starks, was that your hand up or are you nope. just? Nope, uh... I was just saying the Gibbs. I, I, I share your sense of urgency, uh, Dr. Allison Ampey. Um, uh, anytime somebody says, well, let's wait and see, I, I get very nervous. I, I don't want to wait and see. I think that we've spent a lot of time discussing this. We've been discussing this for the full year. All the options have been thrown out to the public. We've solicited a, a boatload of opinions on where we go. Uh, it's now down to two choices. I think that the, uh, the eventual choice will emerge within a, a week or two when, when the report comes out from the architects, whatever that might be. Um, and once we're there, I think we should pick this up and work as diligently as we can to push it forward. If we can't make it by 18, then we can't do it. But I don't think we should be do taking a wait and see approach or just doing this at a leisurely pace. Once we make the decision, we stand by it, we come together, we make all the arguments, we develop the long range plan to uh, explain what we're doing here to the voters because they're talking about doing two different overrides. The political people, the selectmen will make the uh, override decision. The people uh, from multiple boards will be making decisions in terms of timeline and strategy. But I think that from our point of view, where we are as a school committee, we've got a huge problem. We need that space. We need that space as soon as we can. And that's why I think that this is an excellent motion. And I'm thankful to Dr. Allison Appy bringing this up. Mr. Thielman. Yeah, one question. So uh, it, Paul said we're going to get a report in a week. When, when's the report we're going to get an interim. An interim. Have, well, it's an interim it's report. It's an interim report. It's not the complete report. Yeah. Yeah, it's the interim just report. basically mm -hmm. where they are mm -hmm. in it. May, may I just yeah. make, Go ahead. It's not on the motion. Mm -hmm. I, I do share a, a sense of urgency to have some resolution to where we need to go. But I just want to clarify, 
there's a difference between a feasibility and, and a designer study. Mm -hmm. The designer study that we're going to do for Thompson means that we could actually go into bidding for mm -hmm. construction. Mm -hmm. It's a very detailed, mm -hmm. the feasibility is a very different kind of study. Mm -hmm. uh, and generally, this is just a sort of rule of thumb that I, I've learned a lot about this, and I'm not saying that this, this is what I've been told, that it rough, the designer costs are roughly 20% of the cost of the project in order to get all the drawings and, and the plans mm -hmm. ready. And in, in order for, let's say if the override was deferred until the fall, you, you, you need to have at least three or four months to do those. So you'd have to have the money this spring in order to have it and, and then hope that the override passes. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Allison Ampey. I was going on the numbers that Mr. Cole had next to me, so I was going from those which he had said. Well, well, you know, our point so. here is we're not debating the numbers right now, and we're, we're not in the construction business uh, or in the education business. We're stating our needs, and, and at that point now, how much it's going to cost, I don't know. How we finance it, I don't know. I don't do municipal finance. I do education. I think that's what we're here to do, and that, that's why I think that the limit of this we're not identifying money. We're not saying you know, how to do it. We're just saying this is what we need, and we need it badly. We need space by 2018. Yeah. 2018. That's yeah. what you're saying. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's the oh, and, 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 the, and the parking, mm -hmm. and, and we know the parking uh, modulars at the Odyssey is a really bad idea. This should be avoided, if at all uh, possible. Uh, anyone, any other discussion on that motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's a unanimous vote. Or, or abstain. Uh, uh, Dr. Seuss abstains. Excellent. Superintendent. <laughs> Back to you. Would you. What is your wish to, this evening? Do you want me to just do a quick update on all of the district goals and things where, where we are or, yeah, or defer? Or, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Just a quick little synopsis. A quick synopsis would be in order. Anything that's detailed or requires thought would uh, and paper. Mr. Mr. The, uh, Mr. Hainer. I, I just ask that, uh, and I've talked to the superintendent about this, just have something sent to us in writing a uh, compilation at, mm -hmm. at your, when you get a chance. Okay. Thank you. Is that acceptable with the rest of the committee? Okay, very good. Anything else? All no. right, so we've talked about um, a strategic initiative. So we have for people listening, we have four overarching goals. It's really encompass mm -hmm. the vision of the school department in terms of its, edu its education. There's also a mission, but we have four overarching goals and every year we have strategic initiatives around those particular goals. So under student achievement, we wanted to emphasize inquiry and experiential learning to promote student engagement and a deeper understanding of the curriculum. And there are different, um, at, at all levels, there are different initiatives going on. At the elementary level, we've, uh, we're, we're implementing the new FOSS science curriculum in grades one through three. And the, this curriculum uh, is aligned with the new generation science standards, which is a very experiential kind of learning. The high school has done a lot of work with um, expanding makerspace, and in fact, just was rewarded a grant from the AEF to even expand that further. And we're actually looking for even more money to um, expand uh, the type of, and the, the makerspace is a place, it's a sort of an ed term these days. Uh, it's a place really where you can make things, essentially, it's a makerspace. And the, it's, it's uh, we have groups making various things for an engineering course, or it could even be for an art course or a math course. And they, we have a space um, in the school where that's happening. We've also expanded the internship program. And in fact, this, this is a program that I, I particularly um, want to see expanded even more in the years to come, because it gives kids an opportunity to go out and have the experience of working and doing a project in a setting where this is something they might want to do uh, later on in life. And I think it is, it's, a, it's a great way for them to get that kind of experience as to what it's like to be in a work environment, to gain the confidence that gives you. And I know that uh, Mr. Thielman, they, at his former school, they did this 
and it was an extremely successful program. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, we are working at the high school to, um, to secure m more consulting services to make this better. I'm, I'm just gonna go through quick things. Increase the social emotional uh, needs of students in the school. We have um, a planning grant out to AEF and you, we heard, you heard about that before and we just were awarded it. And so there's a lot of work going forward in, in creating a planning for cohesion in the district. Mm -hmm. But this year we have also uh, had offered more responsive classroom training. Um, uh, WIDECO is working to develop consistent protocols in schools and we've also had a trauma course. Um, expand opportunities for secondary students to gain college and career readiness. Well, that also goes to the internship program. But the thing is that in some ways, adopting PARC and going to this next generation of assessments has, a, has an effect in that uh, the, we're developing, the, the common core standards are, are helping to shape curriculum in schools uh, to develop the skills in very young children in, in, in skills that they really do need, which would be in close reading, uh, being able to do informational kind of writing, persuasion kind of writing, analysis, synthesis, um, doing more, we're trying to work toward more cross-curricular writing and reading. So these are all the skills early on that lead to that. One, the next goal has to do, the general overarching goal has to do with staff excellence and professional development. And um, uh, Dr. Chesson is gonna talk a little bit about, we, we have been working, with let's just say, this. educators always look at data. I mean, if you're a teacher, mm -hmm. you're always looking at data. The results of your tests, your, your, exit, your exit, that is part of being a teacher and you adjust to what you learn from that data. But we're, we've entered in the last few years into more formal processes and looking mm -hmm. at uh, both in terms of how it affects our curriculum, what happens to teaching and learning, and I'll let you talk a little bit more about the initiatives that's going on specifically this year. So uh, Tuesday afternoons, uh, once a month, there's a data time for teachers to look at data formally, and then there's also a common planning time. But I just wanted to give you just a taste of what something that you might not think of as data, because often we think it's just numbers on a page, and that we consider looking at samples of student work uh, looking at data. So we would I ask teachers, we, I have uh, Tammy McBride, who I believe you met before, one of the literacy specialists. Um, sat down with teachers and had them bring a low, medium, or high and high at the beginning of the unit, a pre-writing assignment that allowed them to see where the deficits were with their students, um, this, what they needed to work on, but also those students at the high end. And then they were able to revamp their unit plan based on that information. Halfway through, they again had students write. They came back together again to see if they were on the right track. And at the end, they looked to see if they had succeeded in what they were doing. So that's looking at student work is a little bit different than mm -hmm. the kind of mm -hmm. data that you might have thought otherwise. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and moving on, the next strategic initiative is to develop a district strategy plan for teacher leadership for teacher career growth. And again, this is not something that is new this year. We have done a, a lot around teacher leadership, both as, as mentors and curriculum mentoring. But we've, we've taken it to a new, a, a new level this year um, and, and again, I'm gonna ask Dr. Chesson to talk about the, the PLN we're part of. So we actually received a grant from AEF to uh, plan how we would expand teacher leadership for this year, and it's our um, goal to go back to them uh, at the end of the school year to ask for at least a one-year expansion grant for this. We're part of a PLN, or Professional Learning Network, with the state um, where we are working with other districts, um, most particularly with uh, Wakefield and Groton Dunstable, um, because those are districts that have coaching and also have um, other types of teacher leadership, lab site teacher leadership that we have. So you, the committee has already heard many times this year about the different work that we're doing in terms of the lab sites, um, in terms of uh, the teachers running professional development. So we also have many courses that right now that are being run by teachers. And over the summer, we'll be getting to train our own teachers to run the academies so that they can train other teacher leaders. And that will be how we will continue this um, without the grant funding when the grant funding is discontinued. All right, so 
A third strategic initiative was to improve EL teaching and learning. Uh, as you know, we've gone through the retail the last couple of years. This year, administrators took the retail course for administrators, and <coughs> they had to, the part of their experiential part of it was to observe their own teachers who have gone through the course to see how they're using strategies in their classrooms. So um, that was the main focus, uh, the main activity this year. So we also have, the, as I mentioned earlier, the introduction of the new FOSS curriculum for grades one through three. Next year we'll be introducing it from in grades four and five. And do you want to talk a little bit about the, um, the PD that we've had this year on that implementation? So in November, uh, all the three grades that we're implementing this year had a whole day professional development that was uh, sponsored by the FOSS organization, the actual writers of the curriculum. And then twice during the school year on the Tuesday afternoons, each of the grades one through three had uh, additional professional development to support them in the implementation of the, of the program. This is not a one-year uh, introduction to it. This is going to take a while for teachers to feel really comfortable with it. We, we fully understand that. Um, and it, until we were able even probably to get even the power standards of each one of these units um, organized, it's going to take summer work, um, more PD. So while this was an initiative, many of these are not one year. And this is a good example of that. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take a while. And for a lot of teachers, science was not their content specialty when they went into teaching at the elementary level. So you know, we, we need to continually provide uh, more professional development. And frankly, we need coaching in this area. And that might be something we talk about next year at budget time. <laughs> Okay, so moving on to goal three with resources, infrastructure, and uh, for the educational environment. We've talked a little bit, quite a, by, quite a lot about this, is develop the plan to address mm -hmm. the, uh, the anticipated enrollment growth. And then do everything possible to expedite the rebuilding of AHS. Mm -hmm. We're there. Um, we, will, we will be commencing that first module at the end of May. Um, while we're doing some work in preparation, it, we will be on a very rigid timeline to get things done once that begins. The improve the maintenance, the third one is improve the maintenance of the uh, Arlington Public School buildings. I would have to say, and this is sort of universally said by the principals, they're much, they're much cleaner. Uh, I think it's really made a big difference to have a facilities department mm -hmm. and with a, a way for to communicate um, where there's needs in a building, it, it has made a it has made a big difference uh, for sure. But uh, we can talk more about how the, the, the facilities department is working. I, I think so far, you know, it's a it's a change, it's adjustments. Certainly, the the director and I meet fairly regularly uh, to talk about things that come up. If I may, Mr. Hainer, uh, is. The it's been a long time since we've heard of uh, the Early Childhood Center. Are things going well there as far as facility? Yes, uh, we, that has been a, a recent issue. Uh, it, yes, but, but it, it's going well. Okay. Uh, and Ms. Foley would be glad to know that we're, it's, it's, we have a better system, I think, in place going forward. Good, but, thank you. But, you know, dealing with a lot of the, you know, the maintenance needs down there. Mm -hmm. It's an old building. No question. <laughs> and everybody's trying their very best to, keep it as, as clean and as functional as possible. Thank you. One thing what is happening with the preschool, by the way, we are going ahead and creating another classroom because we're going to need it. So that work is happening. Capital Planning Committee provided the money for it this summer. And of course, the debate was, well, is this something we should go forward with given where we are? But after a lot of discussion on that, we definitely are, and it's, it's going to be very needed. The fourth one here um, was the trans to transform teaching and learning by expanding the district's use and integration of technology. And, and, and we've talked quite a bit about that this year, but just a quick synopsis on the terms of the one-to-one, -one, how that's going. Uh, so we had one-to-one -one implementation in um, all of the sixth grade this year, and we actually had 60 students who brought their own devices. We'll be expanding that to BYOD across the entire middle school. 
We also had eight teachers at the high school who um, piloted one-to-one -one in their own classrooms. And again, we'll be expanding BYOD across the entire high school next year. So next year is mm -hmm. going to be exciting. It will be exciting. But mention also the issue with our Facing History group in terms of how they performed. I mean, we're going to have the, the, the students that did, did very well come and, and present to you. Um, but in terms of their technological expertise. Yeah, the, the students who were, as you heard the last time on the uh, his, National History Day competition, have done an outstanding job in terms of using technology as part of their uh, tools. So you'll be seeing that group come in. Dr. Seuss. Oh, I just have a question. I know at the middle school, BYOD is specific to iPads. At the high school level, is it device specific or is it? Actually, at the middle school, iPads are for the sixth grade, and in seventh and eighth grade, students can bring in either a Chromebook, an iPad, or a MacBook Pro oh, okay. Okay. or a MacBook Air. And that, that's true at the high school as and well. And that's the same thing, and, same and so options for the high school. This year, sixth graders will, in seventh grade, be able to bring any device. Any of those three devices. Those three devices. Okay, great. Thanks. And again, it has to do with battery life and ability to keep viruses out of the system. Right. Mr. Pierce. What about the, um, the question I have is the BYOD for the students who are unable to have their own at home. Can they bring a school's back home to work on it or is it just simply? No, we don't even, in, at the one-to-one -one at the middle school for sixth grade, we don't bring, um, we don't allow students to bring them home, any student to bring mm -hmm. those home. Um, it, it adds another layer of complexity. Mm -hmm. um, I think it is something we'll, that we've had that discussion. As a matter of fact, I had that discussion with the uh, administrators at the middle school this morning. Mm -hmm. So I think it's something that we'll be looking at down the line. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a model for that. Um, in Boston, they actually have a model where families that um, have uh, a socioeconomic need are able to, um, it's called Tech Goes Home in mm -hmm. Boston. And, and, and I know the director very well. And um, it's something that we'll be looking at down the line. Mr. Hainer. Security both ways. When a student bring, brings their own device in, does it have to be go through a process <coughs> before it, it? It goes through our network. They're accessing the internet through our network, so it has the same filters on it that our, our own machines do. So nothing they bring can migrate into our system? It, well, you know, where there's a will, there's always a way, but, uh, but, but that's stated, why we chose we, those devices. Okay, fine. I'm just more concerned with the, the ones that bring their in. The, we control the ones that don't go home. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. But the ones, if I bring my own machine in, and I, I understand the will, there's a way, but we have safeguards in place. To, yes, it immediately, when they log that. onto the network, it immediately scans to make sure that they have the correct level of virus software on Before them. they can move into yeah. great. Did you ever notice that when we try to log into things, we can't do it because it's blocked? Some things. I, I can get in and out of the net. Mm -hmm. I can't do my. It, it, there's uh, certain you know, things. Yeah. Yeah. The net I can access, which. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else, Dr. Bodie? Um, just quickly, this will much faster. Um, this is goal four, which has to do with operations, communication, and stakeholder engagement dashboard. We're going to be meeting on that next week. Okay. We have some preliminary mm -hmm. work that we'll be sharing. Uh, improve the communication by improving district and school websites. I think that that has mm -hmm. been very successful this year. I. I, I I haven't heard feedback from people, but I don't know if you have. But I, I know that even my own use of it, I find it much easier mm -hmm. to navigate, to get information. And we have a lot. That's the thing that people didn't understand, I think, in the old, the old website. We have a lot of information. If you go and look at other district websites, you will not see the same depth of information that you can find in ours. But it wasn't as organized as well as it probably could have been. One thing that I noticed today, Mr. Chair, was when I was trying to pull down policies under our policy tab, it, it, it could just be my device, but I didn't know if anyone else was having a problem. Once you oh. go up to the home tabs, if, yeah. you, if you push down on one, you get the menu really quick and then it fades away. And you can't, you can't click on any of the sub if, menu items. There may be your device. I, I, had, I, be I had it at the beginning. Yeah, Mr. Hainer. Sorry. I had it at the beginning and my wife said, if you're patient, Mm. Let it fully to. load itself. Once I let it fully load, give it a couple, oh, okay. of, a couple of seconds, then I, I was having the same dance with the tabs mm -hmm. at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Once I let it fully load, everything's been working for me. Oh, okay. You and I got a yeah. similar system. Lean yeah. on it. Oh. All right. Okay. okay. All right, then I'll get rid of policies. <laughs> we'll check it. And then the, the last was the increase the diversity of the APS staff. And we certainly have worked on that. 
Mr. Spiegel's talked about it, and we're going to be having a, a coffee coming up this month. Yeah. So that's Mr. just a Heater. quick synopsis. I just uh, the other night when the candidates, uh, school committee candidates, they were hit, and uh, happy to say our, our current <laughs> member on cultural diversity, uh, what the stance was. And uh, that was a question that was presented in the public cultural the other competency. night. Cultural competency. So, uh, and Dr. Ampey handled it very well. Cultural competency. Competency, thank you. Yeah. Cultural competency. I'm sorry. Who is it? That's okay. Um, and that concludes the superintendent's report. We're now going to consent agenda. Uh, first, we need to pull off uh, out of the consent agenda the organizational meeting because there's no proposed vote in the consent agenda. So the consent agenda is, I'm looking at electronically, I need the paper for the, the language. All items listed with an asterisk are considered to be routine and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a member of the committee so requests in which event the item will be considered in its normal sequence. Vote to approve warrant 16137, dated March 10th. Total warrant amount $427,491.78. Vote to approve school committee regular draft minutes, March 10th, 2016. Vote to approve public hearing on school choice, May 12th, 2016, at 6.30 p.m. Mr. Thielman. I have to pull the minutes from the... Uh, uh, pulling the minutes. Um, the 10th. Wait, so why are we not voting the organizational meeting? Because there's no vote in the consent agenda. We, ha we need la voting language, which is not listed. Ah. So, so are we having one? Yeah, we, we, uh, we're going to have one anyway, but we, ha we would have to. What we'll do as a separate motion, you'll see why in a second. Okay. So all in favor of the two items in the consent agenda say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, the consent agenda is passed. Now vote to approve the school committee regular draft minutes, March 10th. Uh, motion by oh, oh, Mr. Uh, Pierce. A vote, motion by Mr. Pierce, second by Mr. Hainer. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, Mr. Thielman, you abstain? I do. 601, uh, and that is approved. Um, we need to set an organizational meeting, and a vote would state when the date and time of the organizational meeting, which was not listed in the consent agenda. So we can't vote a meeting where we don't establish a date and time. I would like to ask the committee to uh, vote the, uh, to make two votes here, make one vote with two things. One is to have the organizational meeting at 6.30 p.m. on the 14th, followed by uh, a regular meeting starting at 6.45. Okay. So, that, so there are two things that are happening here. We're voting to change the start time. Uh, Dr. Allison Ampey. Can I say so moved? So moved. Second. Uh, any discussion? Just, so not a 6.15? No, like 6.15. Just a 6.30. 6.30, okay. just like regular. Just like regular. Okay. okay. But, but these are two separate meetings, and the... the uh, the organizational meeting must occur before the first regular meeting. So by scheduling the first regular meeting at 645, we can have the organizational meeting at 630. Perfect. Okay. Um, any further comments, discussions, questions? The 14th of April. 14th of, 14th of April. 14th of April, yes. Uh, Dr. Seuss. Just a comment. Um, we want to see the history students coming in, and so we are going to push public comment to a little bit later. So if anyone's coming in for public comment, it'll be on the agenda. but. That's sort of the plan. We'll post the agenda. We'll and post the agenda, be, and that will be clear. Right. The chair is uh, fully able to go and adjust the agenda as uh, she sees fit. I look forward to it. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Um, subcommittee liaison reports. Before we do any other reports, let me just state that we went to the Trivia Bee on Sunday. <laughs> and it was a wonderful <laughs> thing. We got knocked out of the first swarm. Oh, <laughs> Awful. We did not did make go? the pesticide run. We didn't know who was we running around without Harry a head. Potter vote. Oh, Harry goodness. Potter. Oh. Uh, I went home. Rieko <laughs> said, "Of course, it's so and so." And you know, we should get her on the team next year. Um, <laughs> however, we did win best costume. All right. Uh, which is testimony. <laughs> which is testimony to our firm, solid commitment in upholding everything to do with the open meeting law because we did not deliberate 
outside of the meat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we, and were, we had similar colors. We had yellows and reds. We were funky <laughs> and eclectic and cool. And uh, I wore a Hanshin Tigers hoppy coat. Uh, it yeah. wasn't, it wasn't a pity vote, was it? It might have been. It might have been. It might have been. been. Yes, <laughs> I think so. Uh, but you know, the thing is, is it was fun, and I, I, I think that we looked like we were having fun. And, that's it. Uh, uh, Judson and Fez is wonderful. <laughs> Whoa, that's an image I'll take. You, with you, me. You've seen the pictures; they're on yeah, Facebook. The paper. Yeah, and in the paper. Oh my God! Oh, yeah. You're immortal. Oh God! <laughs> there goes your career. There's right. A yeah. Theater. Your, your your last meeting of the school committee. You're honored for looking silly. Yes. Uh, this will help your thespian career. Okay, going down the list of everybody, policies and procedures, you're the all-star tonight. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and, and Karen, thank you so much for all your work you've done for us and for policies and procedures in particular. Um, just making my last meeting uh, with all these on the list go so well, so thank you very much. Um, we have a few for second read tonight. Um, the first uh, is on the ACABE, which is just deleting the old uh, people who are no longer uh, and updating the MCAD and EEOC uh, places that they are now. So I put ACABE as a motion on the table to approve. Second. With those changes. Okay, moved by Mr. Pierce, second by Mr. Hainer. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous vote. Okay, the next is um, the smoking of school premises, ADC. Um, uh, we made the following, when we met as a subcommittee on Monday, we added uh, use of any tobacco products or any smoking slash vaping materials. And uh, the other correction, um, nope, that was, the only, that was the only small edit we made on Monday night. So with that, I make a motion to approve ADC tonight. Second. Moved by Mr. Pierce, second by Mr. Hainer. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Uh, continue. Okay. Uh, concerning school councils, file BDFA. Um, you'll see the changes that are highlighted uh, and underlined. Um, we one one thing that didn't make it into the second read and that's my fault is to add and we talked about this monday uh, a sentence that a term of a school council member is from october 1st to september 30th mm -hmm. and that gets us around the problem that we're having now the situation now is that the school improvement plans are done in june and more happens over the summer and then they come back and they're a new unit and they haven't had any input into what they're voting on mm -hmm. Uh, or, or, right? Is that is that essentially yes. the problem? Plus elections and the election. So we're we're moving. We're asking that the election be done in October and um, by October first. By October first. Right. So that the term be September. September. Ten one to yeah, nine thirty. That's the issue. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Motion by Mr. Pierce. Second by Mr. Hainer. Uh, Dr. Allison Ampey. Are you asking us to improve this because I thought you wanted to add the term in or something? Yeah, that didn't make it in. Um, so, what do you do? You want to add it now, or are we? Do you want to fix it and we'll send it for second read next meeting? I I, I think that we discussed yeah. this at the, the last was. meeting so that we w all this is is providing language consistent with our intent. If people think this is a radically new or worth holding over, we can do that. But uh, I'm not seeing it as that big a change. There's just a, there's a sentence missing. It's yeah, it's yeah. that missing sentence that. I'm going to add in the second paragraph. And you're going to fix the in September no later than October 15th. Mm -hmm. Correct. In the yeah. yeah, no later than October 1st. In, mm -hmm. Okay. Right? No. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. 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 Any other discussion, comments, questions on this? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous, uh, abstain? Unanimous vote. Okay. Um, moving on to. EEAA. 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 This has been sent to our town council. Legal council. We haven't. I, I haven't heard, yet heard back from him, so I can't okay. uh, put this on the table for us. Um, next one, we'll hold it. GCB. Yep. Yeah, next one, the GCB. We did get a draft from our council. 
um, with some new language. We had some real discussion on this, and uh, we need There's to have a little bit more. Stuff in here, yeah. Um, okay. So I would ask that this be pushed to the next. Okay, so policies. ignore it. Yep, for now. So GCB and the GCBA ones we're going to we'll hold off on. on. Okay. The email distribution list policy, uh, file IJNDD. We basically, the new changes are we crossed out the first sentence, which isn't our techno technology mission in the first place, and uh, we added postings to official school distribution lists will be limited to faculty and staff. Mm -hmm. Um, motion to approve IJNDD. A motion to approve, second by Mr. Hainer. Any questions, discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's adopted. And uh, entrance age file JEB, adding the preamble language that the Arlington schools believe a strict cutoff date for the start of kindergarten and first grade, benefit the educational and social emotional needs of the student throughout his or her K through 12 years. And then it would be considerable discussion has been conducted on the issue of school readiness. For this reason, at this time, the APS will not entertain petitions to accelerate the start date for a student based on age. So we're cutting out the language talking about the early childhood longitudinal study. Mm -hmm. It created a, mm -hmm. a lot more um, verbiage than we needed. Yeah. Motion by Mr. Pierce, second by Mr. Hainer. Any discussion? <laughs> Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Unanimous vote. Uh, a few more. Uh, we're deleting. Uh, I, we're recommending to delete and remove file JICG on Arlington High School policy and tobacco because it's encompassed on the one that we revised a few moments ago. So, motion by Mr. Pierce, second by Mr. Hainer. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous vote. File JKAA on policy on restraint of students. Uh, we have the um, uh, policy that was vetted by attorney Nancy Nevels and our special education director. This complies with the current law. This one, that the, our old one was last updated four years ago. Um, and this just uh, basically complies with the new law and we would recommend that it be passed tonight. Mm -hmm. That's my motion. Motion by Mr. Pierce, second by Mr. Hainer. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? All, uh, unanimous vote. Okay. Uh, sm same thing as the previous smoking policy that we deleted. We're recommending uh, to remove and delete file KJC, smoking on school premises at public functions, no smoking policy. KGC. Moved by Mr. Uh, Pierce, second by Mr. Hainer. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstain? Unanimous vote. Okay, and finally on file KI visitors to the school, uh, we're saying during the school day, mm -hmm. no persons except parents or guardians of children, those appointed for the purpose of the committee or those officially connected with the school shall be allowed in the schools unless permission is given by the superintendent or his or her designee. A log shall be maintained in each school office to record the name, who's visiting, purpose of visit, and time. New language visitors shall check in as dictated in each school's entries procedures, not sign in. So with that change, I recommend that we pass KI. Uh, motion by Mr. Pierce, second by Mr. Heiner. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Team. Abstain? Team. Unanimous vote. And um, we have, um, hopefully I've given out to my, my fellow members uh, the jumping off point that Attorney Bryant did when, when Mr. Thielman was chair of the subcommittee in January of 2014. Uh, some of these are still threes and fours that could be updated and reviewed for this coming year. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I wish you all the best of luck on that. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Seuss. Uh, I was just wondering um, if we wanted to bring to the full committee um, this whole question that we debated back and forth about um, um, school committee's uh, authority over principal salaries. Um, we, we sort of batted that back and forth, or if we, or if you, or if you feel that it should stay at subcommittee level at this point. I, I think from what, I, what I, I, I've had discussions, um, I think it would be great to have Attorney Bryant give us another read through her, her, her philosophy based on our discussion mm -hmm. before we um, bring, it, bring it to the table, because I think it would be useful for all of us to have her take on 
what we were talking about on Monday night. Mr. Thielman. So for the sake of clarity, the first, the first readings, uh, GCB, GCBA, GCBB, employment of principles being one of, yeah. are they, so is this, for, this is first reading and it's going to come for a no, second? No, no, it's not. No. So these really aren't first readings. He took them off. He took them off. Just drafts. Yeah. Yeah. Drafts. Yeah. drafts for discussion. Yes. Okay. So yeah. the new so committee's really got to restart the whole process. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we really haven't had a first reading yet in any no. of these. No. So no. this is not coming up for a second reading in no. April. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. we said ignore this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I just wanted to make, well, because it says first reading. So yes. Oh, no, it says, but uh, okay. yeah. the action was is we're ignoring the recommend. Yeah. Uh, we, we didn't bring them through first reading. Uh, Dr. Allison Ampey. Um, the other thing we did with that list that we have of yep. the policies, we've asked the administration either via Ms. Fitzgerald or, or someone else, I forget who, um, to create a spreadsheet of the same information, but this way we can sort it, we, we can update it and we can <coughs> sort it which policies need updating first. Which are um, oldest? Yeah, well, oldest or, or right. well, that's are most idea. in need of updating you know, right now it's this pages Monolith. long yeah. thing and it's hard to look mm -hmm. at and get a picture mm -hmm. of well this one and anyway yeah so. that's a great idea excellent and um, i think it's important also to note that at all times all district policies are intended to be in red in conjunction with the applicable laws so that yeah. there's any discrepancy whatsoever to district policies and applicable laws such laws will take precedence and, mm -hmm. and we should always note that when we're updating or revising mm -hmm. or changing these when we become aware of a change in law, we uh, attempt to uh, revise the policy so it aligns. We may not always catch it because the rascals up at Beacon Hill do <laughs> peculiar things at times. But that's okay. Mr. Hayden. We, we get uh, nice updates from MESC. They mm -hmm. just gave us all one. I don't know if you've got it yet uh, on the, the new drug, mm -hmm. uh, which I thought was very intensive. It, it was the only one on this, mm -hmm. this thing. We also get uh, occasional updates from different councils. Mm -hmm. Uh, of changes and mm -hmm. some of them say you got to work on this right away right and I'm sure dr. Uh, Bodie gets them probably even ahead of us mm -hmm. so yeah there are a lot of sources for uh, notification of yeah. these things but uh, every once in a while something gets attached mm -hmm. is an outside section of the budget and all of a sudden hello um, budget. so that's uh, completes your work as uh, chair of the policies and procedures committee You've done a great job, uh, awesome. Judd. Thank you very much. Very much, Mr. Um, Chair. Uh, budget subcommittee, Kersey Allison, happy. Um, budget, we have a budget. Um, we are going to send out a doodle to meet next week um, to look over the uh, budget book before it goes to town, before it goes to the printer to go to town meeting. Excellent. Question. Uh, question. Can you give us an update on the BRTF for those of us who didn't go? Do you want, yeah. Budget Revenue Task Force, yeah. Um, so it met on Monday. Um, the bulk of the discussion centered around timing of debt exclusions and various people's ideas of timing of debt exclusions. Mm -hmm. And it kind of pinged between, well, could we do it in June? And what are the pluses and minuses of June? Could we do it in the fall? What are the pluses and minuses of the fall? And there really wasn't consensus about what the best thing was. Um, and then there was also, the, it was pointed out that Minuteman yeah. has a really high likelihood um, because they can actually call a debt exclusion, I mean, they can call a, a referendum, a referendum mm -hmm. to approve the reconstruction and mm -hmm. therefore incur the debt. Um, if any of the towns vote no as we go forward mm -hmm. on the the current plan, right. um, and they'll they when was it June twenty fourth I think eighteenth 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 okay. June eighteenth yeah so they and and the problem is that not only can they call that but their election has very different rules that are specified by law than our elections do so. We can't even anticipate this coming and time our question to do with it because that would come under our election. So you would have this weird thing where the Minuteman could be from for eight hours during the day. Ours has to be from 12 hours. And so some of the time you get one ballot, some of the time you get two ballots. And it 
it's just logistically oh, wow. yeah yeah exactly it's yeah. it's like crazy oh, so crazy. anyone else who was there went to yeah i mean the, the, the law for the minuteman vote is they can be no less than four or no more than eight hours in terms of the length of the polling yeah. time and my sense is listening to the discussion that june would have sort of laid out as a consensus time except that the minuteman vote just sort of gets in the way dr seuss uh yeah so my sense is that the minuteman is what's putting you know, making everything really difficult. If Miniman weren't there, the whole decision would be easier. Um, but I had the pleasure of sitting through the selectmen's meeting that night for many hours, and there they voted to um, send this discussion to the Long Range Planning Committee. So, um, I mean, the selectmen ultimately make the decision about when we have a debt exclusion, and they've decided they want to talk about it there first. Yeah. The, okay. the other thing was, um, budget Revenue Task Force was supposed to meet again in two weeks. That that was, except mm -hmm. they weren't sure what date would work, and right. so that's supposed to be coming out as a doodle too. So there should be another one coming very okay. soon. Okay, so there were no decisions made at no. this no. BRTF. No. Nothing no. came no. out of it. Okay. Um, budget facility, Cindy Starks. Nothing to report. District Accountability, Curriculum Instruction and Assessment, uh, Jeff Fielding. No report. Community Relations, uh, Jennifer Seuss. Uh, we have a meeting next week. Uh, we'll hopefully look at some dashboard stuff. Um, we'll talk about community outreach, about the decisions that mm -hmm. we won't make any decisions yet, but about the decisions um, on the Gibbs, if that turns out to be the mm -hmm. case. Um, and what else are we discussing? Oh, and the superintendent had graciously um, agreed to do at least one coffee um, that's fairly open-ended, where parents can come, where we can focus on what's going on in our schools with maybe just a very short presentation, but sort of open-ended for, for conversation. Um, and so hopefully we'll finalize that date then. Yeah. Okay. Um, executive session minute review subcommittee. I guess we're going to be talking. We're going to be discussing that in executive session tonight uh, <laughs> for the purpose of approving and releasing. Yes. Yep. Uh, warrant committee, everybody got paid. Yes. Um, school enrollment task force, I think we've talked that out. Beat that up. Next week. Um, school liaisons, anyone with a school liaison report? Uh, Dr. Seuss? Oh, I went to the townwide PTO meeting and just told them about the mess that is our upcoming debt, debt mm -hmm. exclusion <laughs> vote and all the conversations that's going on. Um, they were very interested in that, so that's mm -hmm. that was uh, our focus okay uh, that brings us down to the executive session uh, so uh, I'd like to entertain a motion to go into executive to review executive session to review executive session minutes for approval and release for the following dates September 27th 2012 October 11th 2012 October 25th 2012 November 5th 2012 November 27th 2012 December 6, 2012, December 20, 2012. Following dates in 2013, January 10, January 24, February 14th, March 14th, March 28th, April 11th, April 25th, May 9, May 23, September 12, <coughs> September 26, October 24, November 21, February 14th, 2014, the remaining dates in 2014 are March 13th, March 27th, June 12th, October 23rd, and November 13th. Moved by Mr. Hainer. Yeah? I just, we, we will be, have to come out and vote these again. Oh, we, we, can, we can vote them at the next meeting as Fine. well. Uh, so we don't have to keep the team. I have no problem here. Yeah. Uh, moved by Mr. Hainer, second by Mr. Pierce. Uh, roll call. Aye. Mr. Aye. Hainer, Mr. Pierce, Dr. Allison Ampey. Um, I, yeah. but you didn't. We're not doing any of the other stuff. All we're doing is going to review minutes. Okay. So that's the notice. Uh, Dr. Allison Ampey votes. Aye. Yes. Uh, Ms. Starks, Mr. Thielman. Aye. Dr. Seuss. Yes. Chair votes in the affirmative. We're in executive th session. Th uh, we will not be returning. Thank you. Thank you.